in a previous podcast that you know there is the purans each of the purans they um uh, tell the stories or they narrate the incidents that happened in one day of brahma so brahma we know is a creator god right and brahma has a life span of 100 years each of his years has about 360 days and each of these days is known as a kalpa so the different purans they actually narrate the stories of different kalpas of brahma so in some kalpa it was vishnu who was supreme in some kalpa it was shiva who were appeared first so he's supreme and in other kalpas you know there were different deities who were uh, the first to manifest and therefore they were considered supreme and the purans talk about that particular deity in that particular day you know the devi bhagavat puran the devi puran there are shakta purans you know that are focused on devi and that actually talk about devi being the first form of god mm. to appear so in in one particular kalpa or one particular day of brahma that must have been the case so devi puran actually says that devi was there at the beginning you know shakti was there at the beginning and then the trimurti emerged from her trimurti is vishnu the, the trinity mahesh, yes brahma. brahma vishnu mahesh and okay. then the trinity emerged from her so and we see in hinduism you know when we talk about we are very accustomed to seeing god in specific genders but in upanishads you know when god is described it's mentioned that you cannot contain god in these narrow definitions right the the dualities god is beyond all dualities you know so it's very difficult to ascribe a gender to god mm. but for our for making things easier for us you know god appears or god manifests in different forms to perform certain different functions so when we talk about the trimurti you know the trinity brahma vishnu and mahesh and uh, i think in one of the previous podcast i also mentioned about different forms of lord vishnu so vishnu when we talk about is you know if you go to the root of the word vishnu means you know someone who's spread vishwa we talk about the whole world right vish is something that spreads inside your body what is vish poison okay so vishnu comes from that same root of spreading and what is it that is spread in the entire universe it's space right if you think of it logically so vishnu represents space the color that vishnu is depicted in you know the blue color of the sky or the dark color of space you know that's what vishnu represents when we talk about shiv uh, lord shiv you know we call him mahakal so he's time he's the great god of time who regulates everything you know who's who's responsible for that's why he's called the destroyer because you know when the time is up destruction has to happen you know he is the maintainer of time just as vishnu is of space so we talk about the space time continuum that's what it is you know it's lord vishnu and lord shiv together so what exists around us the material creation is brahma because brahma is responsible for creating it that is brahma Gotcha. right everything in this universe it needs energy to work right otherwise you know there are mountains standing there they cannot move you know there's probably potential energy but no kinetic energy there's no movement happening for us to work for us to do anything in life you know any living being it needs to have energy the entire process of photosynthesis you know starting from photosynthesis is meant to provide us that energy oh. So energy is the uh, wheels you know that makes things move so energy is shakti mm. energy is the goddess so we can represent it in narrow terms by giving them you know very specific form but these are the basic concepts behind those forms and energy is a urja energy is supposed to it's represented as a feminine form but purush and prakriti you know shakti and the masculine form they together combine to create this whole realm or this whole universe okay let's kind of have another parallel narrative for deeper understanding of this um now this is obviously ancient knowledge and ancient knowledge was transferred across generations using stories and characters they say the sapta rishis which are the seven great rishis of hinduism which are probably actual souls yeah. but they're seven great souls they carry pure wisdom from god to human beings and that's their role in the world right now they couldn't pass on that knowledge just as it was to human beings because it's beyond human understanding yes. it's like the fifth dimension that they've shown in interstellar it's beyond human understanding yes. 
so they capture all that information in the form of stories puranas etc and the rishis that we know of in our culture who have existed in the subcontinent for thousands and thousands of years lakhs right. of years probably take the knowledge from the saptrishis and actually pass it on in an easier fashion to human beings by writing these puranas yes. etc yes now how do you explain the space time continuum the space time fabric material creation aspects like all forms of creativity actually being around you and then you just pulling it out of that intuitive net to make it creative creations right oh let's probably call it brahma yes. mahesh and vishnu yes uh now probably the rishis thought how do we explain life how do we explain energy let's give it a feminine form yes